You know, this week I felt like the film breakdown had to be broken into two parts. So today we're going to be talking about Grant Delpit. Tomorrow, probably in the morning, we're going to be talking about Deshaun Watson, that three touchdown game. Obviously a lot to talk about there. But I wanted to focus a whole video on Grant because I think Grant throughout the last six, seven weeks has been unsung, right? And I think I've been singing the praises of him. I've been mentioning and noticing and saying, you can go back to my film reviews. Hey, look, whenever there is a play made in the run game, it's always Grant Delpit or or safety, but it's never a defensive lineman. And the run game has been so bad that I think it's required Grant to be so good in order for the run game to just be its normal, awful self that we've gone, that a lot of his work has gone unnoticed. But I still think that we should highlight the work that Grant's been doing because I think Grant's been putting together some tremendous tape um, this year. And I think he's really starting to put it together and become – the guy that not not just the guy that we wanted in 2019, right? Because that guy was different than what Grant Delpit is. That guy was a free safety prospect. That guy was somebody who could run around and be rangy, um, but ultimately somebody who would be a liability in the box. <laughs> Ironically enough, we're getting 2018 Grant Delpit. You know, the guy who got the seven at LSU. The guy who almost won defensive. Well, he did win defensive player of the year in 2018. The guy who was the best player in the country in 2018 um, at LSU. That's the guy that we're getting. Maybe he's not going to be the true free safety we dreamed him to be, but he could be something that's a lot more, which is a hybrid box uh, safety slash nickel and dime linebacker. And I think that's great given where the league's going, given where um, defenses are going. And it's going to be interesting to see how they use Grant's ability in the box once JOK comes back, if they bring back Sione Taki Taki. Um, and some of the other more athletic linebackers, because right now he's playing a lot uh, of linebacker, like like Will linebacker in base sets, because we have no more linebackers. So it's kind of out of uh, out of um, necessity that he's getting this opportunity. But through necessity breeds opportunity, and opportunity is a chance to show us what you got. And I think Grant has showed us a hell of a lot. And we're going to look through these plays and break it down. All right, so this is Grant. And where is Grant? Again, Grant's in that linebacker set, right? Right here. He's with the linebackers. This looks like base. This looks like base. If we go back, we can see what formation. Yeah, so this looks like base. What base is, for those of you who don't know, is just base 4-3 for the Browns, right? Because they run a 4-3. Uh and that is not a special package, right? Four down linemen, two interior, two edge rushers. So Clowney, Miles, I think Jordan Elliott, Taven Bryant. You have two DBs that are corners right now, which is Greg and Denzel. No slot. Um, and then two safeties. So we have DeAnthony Bell, DB, at free safety. And we have uh, – John Johnson at strong safety. You have Deion Jones at Mike middle inside linebacker. Um, and then you have him. Uh, what is that? Tony Fields here. Is that Tony Fields? I felt like Tony Fields was hurt. I think that's Tony Fields. Yes, yeah, Tony Fields. And Sam. Sam is strong side. Will, weak side, linebacker. JOK usually plays Will, um, and then Sione Takitaki comes in and plays Sam when they're healthy, and usually the mic is Anthony Walker, but we're clearly down. And Grant playing Will, linebacker, today in base set. And this happens quite often. Um, and they're in base. His job is now to just get to his run fit, right? And he does a better job of getting to his run fit than any linebacker, well, the almost than any linebacker I've seen. Look, he gets his run fit, and not only that, he hustles backside and then chases and wraps. 
this is a set where he's coming out of a more safety position, right? Yeah, and he's blitzing. And what he's going to do here is affect Carson Wentz's throw with this free blitz. He gets his hands up. He makes sure that pass is high. He does or doesn't get a hand on it. it it's hard to see, but I don't think he does. But I think he affects the launch angel, angle of it. Um, and then it's too high, and it blows up a play. Um, another play here is this Grant coming out of. Yep. So here is Grant making a play on the running back. And again, now I believe, was he coming out of Sam? No, he's still coming out of Will. Yeah. So, and here's how you can tell two weeks, strong side for those of you who don't know. Um, it's where the ball is lined up, which hash the ball is lined up on. So anything to the short side of the field is the weak side. This is the strong side. Sam will. Now, it can get more complicated than that, but for basics, Sam will alignment. Um, the Browns are in what looks like to be a five front. Well, they're just bringing somebody down. They're in one high, a one high look playing tight man on the outside because what it looks like the Washington uh, commanders are in at least 13 personnel. One, two, three, four, five. Tight end uncovered. That's another tight end running back. One wide receiver. One. Yeah, so. That looks like 12, actually. It looks like 12 because they have another wide receiver motion. So they're in 12 heavy, clearly. Um, and the Browns are countering that with a, with uh, Alex Wright on the edge, Miles Garrett on one edge, and they're pinching with these two um, tackles. They have their base 4-3 set out here. So, again, Tony Fields is out here on the weak side. No, no, no. It's Grant Delpit on weak or Will, Sam, and then Deion uh, Jones is here. I think that's Reggie Ragland that's playing Sam this time. Um, and then they have, you know, they're trying to do an uh, overload kind of to get the edge set to see if it's a run. Um, and they're probably going to do some motion in the middle too. But this is a one high look. They're going to go a lot of man. They're pretty much selling out and run here. And then Grant does a good job being patient. So there's Grant on the weak side. He's being patient. He's waiting. He's seeing how the play develops. He sees 85 come around, and he does a great job of avoiding. Look at this. He does a great job of avoiding 85, who's the lead blocker, skirting around him. And then I think also is that uh, Greg Newsom does a good job getting to his run fit too. And then Grant undercuts him, kills the play. You're going to see it better from here. He shifts. He waits, right? A lot of guys, and what's been happening all season long is that whoever is here has been like either shooting the gap, overrunning it, over pursuing, not being patient. So that wasn't Tony Fields. It's just some dude named Carter, number 40. I ain't never heard of him. All right. Um, and he's being patient because what he's doing here is he's like, okay, I want to see where this play is going to develop because Carson – is in a play action. You know, he could be rolling, booting. I'm going to wait, see what develops. He feels this tight end start to come, and he just sidesteps. Him. Look at that sidestep. That's beautiful. He does a great job of just sidestepping that, line, that tight end and then getting low, finding a base, and attacking it. And then 41 does a good job staying on his feet, and then Greg, good job cleaning up. And then all the white jerseys come there, too. All right, so this time Grant's playing free. Yeah, okay, it's Tony Fields. So Tony Fields is out there. All right, we're so low on linebacker right now. All right, so right now this is – it looked like they were showing too high at the beginning. Um, but this is actually going to be one robber. I believe if John is the free, with John is the strong, yeah, it looked like they were showing too. Wait, they got too deep. 
I believe this is going to be one pretty much like low, but we'll see. That's what it looks like, but I doubt they're actually running that, right? Yeah, okay, they're running too. Okay, so that's just basic cover two. And then what happens here is this is actually Tampa two. This is Tampa two. Okay, so what happens here is that it looks like it might be one high, but it's going to be flexed into a Tampa two. Uh, cover two, as you know, you know what I mean? It is basically this. So you, you cover the flats, you cover everything short. And in Tampa 2, oh, and then you have the two deep safeties, right? We all know that. Now, instead of this linebacker maintaining this middle hash area, in Tampa 2, what you're trying to take away is a seam shot. So this linebacker is going to actually carry this third of the field, and it's going to be like a quasi-cover three, right? But what that linebacker is there to do is to play the option, right? Like, hey, if somebody carries or somebody, if this safety needs to rotate over, I'll rotate deep over to that side or I'll carry whoever comes up this seam. And Deion Jones, to his credit, does a great job of carrying the seam. And then Grant Delpit, to his credit, does a great job of getting to the middle of this number and playing both both lanes, right? He's in position to make a play on the uh, on the seam if the shot is taken, and he's in position to take a sh uh, to make a play on the corner that they're trying to throw, or at least it looks like they're trying to throw here, right? The corner route. So this is just great execution of a Tampa two, right? So Grant, as you can see here, before the ball is thrown, because Carson, who did he throw this from a zero drop? Okay, okay, I, th I thought I was tripping. Okay, Carson Wentz be doing crazy shit sometimes. All right, so Carson gets this one, two, three, four. Okay, so he gets to a five, a sloppy five. Goodness gracious. Um, so he gets to a sloppy five. Um, and what he's looking at is, okay, corner safety here. I can maybe throw that or I can move this safety over and then I'm going to take that seam shot. And I think he tries to move Grant over and take the seam shot. Grant opens his hips right when he throws it. So he wasn't fooled at all by the eyes that, that Carson was trying to show. And then just does a great job of undercutting this. Again, shout out to Deion Jones, who really carried that well. That's not anybody. I think that's um, I think that's 17. I think that's their best player, their best wide receiver. And he just carried them clean. And then boom. A lot of great stuff on tape, man. This was an excellent game for Grant. Right here, Reggie Ragland, boy, he out here shooting. Big old. He an old school linebacker, Reggie Ragland. Like, I don't know how much you can use him now in today's NFL, but he's just a throwback. But Grant is not where Reggie Ragland is. Grant's actually in the box kind of hitting here right above Miles Garrett. I'll highlight him for you. Keep your eye on Reggie, too, you know. If you want to do multiple watches of it, uh, because Reggie just Reggie just be running into pain, <laughs> like he was ready to just run into a fullback or something. You know what I mean? He kind of caught him by surprise that that was the ball carrier there. Uh, so Reggie outruns. I, I just can't make the play. He's just not athletic enough. But you know he forces an angle change, and that's all you need, right? Like a lot of times we focus on who gets to tackle, who doesn't. That's not what's important. What is important is can you affect the runner so somebody else can make the play. So Reggie, to give him his credit, comes in here, and now uh, the running back can't make that cut. So now he has to go around, and that allows Grant to cut up field, get off of his man, which he does a great job at, get to an angle, and get him, which was a tough angle. And you get him for a loss there. So I feel like Rag Raglan gets the credit for that. I feel like Grant does because Raglan runs him right into that. That's like the hidden assist on the football field that you don't see where you just make a running back have to change their mind, and now you can get to a dude like Brian Robinson from that angle. But, again, you're going to watch Reggie, who reads as well, right, just shoots the gap. Not he's just he's just not fast enough to get there, but it didn't matter because he's fast enough to just change the direction just a little bit to get Grant to get there. You get the same result. That's why that's why uh, Reggie's all hyped up over there. 
Big old boy linebacker. That's a big boy. That's my type of linebacker. We don't have enough chubby players in the NFL these days. All right, so we're here he is, and he is actually playing Sam. Yeah. And he comes out here. Good job of filling this one out. He's going to take a massive hit by this guard, and he gets there. Yeah, affect the run. Affect the run. Right here, Grant does a great job just anticipating this. Where did he come from? What position did he come from? Grant be playing so many positions nowadays. Okay. So Grant coming from Sam rolls out and then makes the play. Now Carson doesn't make a good throw, but like even if that was a good throw, it wasn't going to be made. Grant here, now back at will. Again, again in position to make another play. Unfortunately for the Commanders, Wide receiver drops the ball. But, see, Grant sniffs this out before anybody else does. He sees the guard pull, and he knows, oh, y'all trying to play, y'all trying to run a little tunnel screen or a little uh, slip screen. So, ball gets snapped. He starts playing it, and then he sees Big 77 running out there. He's like, okay, this is a screen. And he gets in position. Ball gets dropped, so he doesn't have to end up mattering. But, again, good play, good instincts by Grant. Not getting fooled, staying home, being smart. Grants this time at strong, but he takes the deep actually. And oh, this is his pick. Beautiful catch. One, two. Well, he was all over the place, man. And this is his best play. Now, you could look at this and think that Brian Robinson was going to get tackled anyways. I've watched this Browns defense enough to know. Brian Robinson was gone if he didn't get tackled here, man. Because John Johnson's not making that tackle. And you can see it right here in the step that Brian Robinson takes. He's about to, he's about to explode off that foot, right? He's like well, gear one, gear one. He's about to go into gear two right here. He's about to step into gear two, and before he could plant that foot and extend, because you see how he's really trying to explode, because he knows he could break that John Johnson tackle, and he could probably, what he would probably do is straight, well, not straight, my bad. He would go up into John and then angle this thing that way, and I think maybe Martin gets the tackle there if he can get an angle, but if he does that, that blows uh, Greg Newsom's angle unless, like, John slows him down significantly. And, like, I've seen John tackle in these situations. It's 50-50 whether he would have slowed him down. Um, and, and this dude not going to make the play either. He's basically out of it. And if Grant don't make that tackle, that could be a touchdown. Instead, it ends up as three points. He saved four. Now, I think this is his best play. He just got – and then after this, he got the interception. I showed it before, but after this is when he got the interception. So good job filling, rolling, and then just tough-ass tackle to make here, right? Maybe John makes the tackle if Grant misses that or isn't in position to make that play. We've seen this go the other way. It's that quick. It's that quick, man. Grant dealt it. The real deal. Who would have thought, right? As much as we heard the the horror stories about his last year at LSU, oh, you gotta you gotta keep him out the box. Who would have thought he might be the Browns' best box safety on the roster? Um, but that's it for this film breakdown. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Everybody have a great day. Have an even better night.